When we think about the right amount of inventory to hold in a system, there are several different factors that we need to consider. Some of these are pushing us towards larger inventories, while others are pushing us towards smaller inventories. How should we find the appropriate balance? Let us look at the various factors in this trade-off between holding small versus large inventories. A significant advantage of holding smaller inventories is the lower cost associated with holding the inventories. The cost of holding $100 worth of stuff for a one-year period can run upwards of $30 depending on the nature of the item. Let us say I'm running a retail store. Using $100 worth of material on my shelves, I am able to sell $600 worth every year. I say that my inventory turns over six times a year. On average, I have one-sixth of a year's worth of material sitting on my shelves, or two months worth of inventory. I can also express this inventory in terms of one-sixth of 52 weeks, or 8.67 weeks worth of inventory. Note that in the above calculations, to express the inventory and the final sales in comparable units, I must express both of them in terms of cost of goods. Otherwise, the number of items in $100 worth at the inventory stage will not be the same as the number of items in $100 worth at the final sales stage. So the quantities cannot be compared. To run my store with $100 of inventory, Say my inventory holding cost is 30%, or $30 per year. Therefore, my inventory holding cost works out to 5% of my $600 annual sales, which is a considerable chunk of change. If instead, I can conduct my retail process using only $50 worth of stuff on my shelves, my holding cost will be only $15 per year, or 2.5% of annual sales. I can add the savings straight to my bottom line. An important component of the inventory holding cost is the cost of financing the inventory. This working capital needs to be financed through equity or debt. Smaller inventories reduce the working capital, which reduces the cost of capital. Any funds used to finance inventory have to be compared against other opportunities to invest the same funds. Smaller inventories also involve lower storage and handling costs. Depending on the nature of the item, the storage requirements can include covered space, climate conditioning, security, upkeep, monitoring, administration, stock taking, etc. Smaller inventories also minimize the losses due to shrinkage, theft, obsolescence, spoilage, etc. Perhaps the most insidious aspect of inventories is the intangible costs associated with them. One such cost is the loss of customer focus. Suppose you go to a car dealership looking to buy a red car. I am a salesman there. As soon as you enter, I pounce on you, offer you a cup of coffee, show you several different models, and get you out on a test drive. How do you like this car? You like it, of course, but point out that it's blue, not red. So I take you on another round of the lot and get you into another model. How do you like this one? Once again, you like it, but it's green, not red. So I go chat with my manager and return after a few minutes. My manager said I can reduce the price by $500. You patiently point out, once again, that it's not red. So I go back to my manager. This time I return with more goodies. We'll reduce the price by $1,000 and also throw in free oil changes for two years. You cave in and drive home the green car. Every day for the next 10 years, you get up in the morning, walk into your garage, and kick yourself. 
darn it, I wanted a red car. Firstly, is that customer focus? Not at all. Customer focus would mean telling you point blank within the first two minutes that we don't have any red cars on the lot, but we can get you one if you're willing to wait a week. Then I would look at my computer and tell you that the dealer in the next town has one available, so I'll call him and ask him to hold it for you. Meanwhile, I would launch an investigation into how to improve my forecasting processes so that next time I am not caught off guard. Now, what are the odds I am ever going to do anything so customer focused? Not a chance. What is driving me to my customer unfocused behavior? The reason is that I have a lot of inventory, but just not of the kind you want. I am under pressure to get rid of it, so I am going to push it down your throat. What did this excess inventory cost me? $1,000 in discounts, plus two years of oil changes, of course. More importantly, here's a ticked off customer who is never going to visit my dealership again or recommend anyone. These are huge costs of inventory that we often ignore. Another intangible cost is that inventories help hide process inefficiencies. Inventories are like a band-aid solution that cover up the problem, but don't resolve it. In the above example, while I am busy patting myself on the back for making a sale, even under difficult circumstances, I have totally missed the point that there is something inherently flawed in my processes. Instead, smaller inventories would help me unearth opportunities for process improvements, which can then be addressed. Looking next at the advantages of large inventories, a huge benefit is that of lower ordering costs. As my purchasing quantities increase, the cost of placing orders can be amortized over larger quantities. I am placing fewer orders Therefore, the ordering costs are going to be smaller. However, larger purchasing quantities result in larger inventories, as the items purchased will not be used up for a longer time. Another reason for purchasing larger quantities may be to take advantage of quantity discounts. Or I may want to buy when the price is low and store it for later when the price goes high or I may want to buy large enough quantities to make up a full truckload and thus avoid less than truckload shipments. Instead of purchasing, if I am producing some items, I can produce in large quantities so as to minimize the number of times I need to set up my process. Thereby, I can amortize my setup costs over a large production batch. Doing so will increase my capacity utilization. Finally, holding larger inventories has the potential to improve customer service. As we saw with the car dealership example earlier, holding a larger inventory can increase my chances of having the red car that the customer was looking for. On the other hand, if I operate with a very slim inventory, I might end up turning away far too many customers. Simply having a large inventory, however, is not the answer. Having a large inventory of blue or green cars when the customer wants a red car is of no use whatsoever. It only helps if I have inventory of the right kind of items. In that sense, inventory can be a double-edged sword.